Here we're just uh, cutting the excess threaded rod off that's sticking out of that track. Um, so we just cut it all off with the uh, handheld uh, bandsaw here, the porter band, and we just capped them off with a little brass finial that um, covered up the other edge, uh, made a nice clean look, and also gave us something to act as a lock washer to basically double nut that thing into place. Um, and on the other side of that panel, on the outside, there's also another um, nut with a fender washer, so that track is not moving anywhere. So after coffee time, it was pretty much just time to hang the evaporators. Um, not too hard to do, just measure where you want them to be and uh, drill the hole straight up. Now since these evaporators aren't that heavy, uh, they don't have a whole lot of weight to them. Uh, plus they are going to be spanning the actual support tracks. We didn't need to bring them all the way up with threaded rod to the girders. So uh, what we have here is um, some threaded rod that we're going to drill up through the ceiling and then up above on the box, which you'll get a, a picture of later when we have a walk around. We have 4 by 4s as weight spreaders and fender washers on both sides of it put around to uh, make sure that those aren't going to pull through. So it basically has to pull a 4 by 4 piece of lumber uh, through the ceiling, which is not going to happen. And those ceiling tracks, um, since they're spanning both panels, uh, there's no actual weight on the uh, the engagement hooks of the panels, uh, so they're not going to sag. So that's how everything is held together. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. 
one thing to note as you're watching this here, uh, you can see the lights on the ceiling. Those are actually LEDs, and there's nine of them in here. Uh, and they're spaced perfectly, uh, perfectly aligned. You'll see later on in one of the other videos that uh, three of them have been oriented differently. And the reason for that uh, is after we put these up, the sprinkler guys came in and, and cut their holes in complete, completely and then said uh, to our electricians that they had to move the lights because they were too close to the sprinkler heads for whatever reason. I don't know why, but uh, that's why in a, in, later on you might see notice that those lights are kind of in a funky orientation, and that's the reason why.
<laughs> yeah. Oh, they binded that form pretty good to that, huh? Don't have any video of us doing the piping, but it's such a short run. Uh, it's just a uh, half inch liquid line and inch and an eighth suction line with uh, three quarter inch wall armor flux over there. Um, on the top here, you can get a really good sense of how those uh, threaded rod supports go through the channel right through the seam. Um, all this EMT up top is all 120 volt feeding the fans and three door heaters and two vent heaters. The electrician did an awesome, awesome job. Uh, you see bent right up over the 4x4s four there. That gray box in the far corner is a 460 volt junction box feeding both of our disconnects that are mounted to the other side of the box. Uh, the condensing units are indoors, uh, customer requests. We wanted to put them on the roof, but you know they're inside. The electrician had to redo that whole service. He put in that whole 460 volt service pulled directly from the main. He did a really, really, really good job. Just wanted to take a quick second to talk about the wiring for this unit. Um, the compressor is 460 volt three phase. Um, the condenser fan motor is 460 volt single phase. The fan motors in the evaporator are all 460 volt single phase. And the heaters are 460 volt single phase. Um, but all my controls are 208 volt. So unlike a normal uh, unit, controlled by 208 voltage where you would only have uh, five wires going into the evaporator. This has nine. So that top corner there, top right hand corner, that's a 208 volt transformer giving me my control voltage. That uh, thing in the middle there in the center, that's the time clock. The bottom left, uh, one of those contactors is for the, the evaporator fans. The other one is for the evaporator heaters. That blue looking thing in the center of the bottom row, that's a phase monitor. Uh, with that, since this is a, um, a scroll compressor, it can only run in one direction. So that phase monitor won't allow the compressor to run unless it um, is in the correct uh, direction. And also, if we were to ever lose a phase for any reason, that would shut the unit down so we wouldn't single phase and kill the compressor. Now uh, that contactor on the right hand side, that's the main contactor for the compressor with a couple of auxiliary contacts for the belly band heaters, things like that. So the nine wires going into the to the um, coil are going to be two off of one of those contactors that are going to be for my fans, two off of the other contactor that are going to be for my heaters, uh, X terminal off of the uh, time clock, which is going to be my termination switch, is, we'll talk more about that. N off of my uh, time clock, which is one side of my 208. One off of my time clock, which is the other side of the 208. Number three, which is my heat is, is going to be going into my coil, but also going to uh, one of those contactors. Number four is going to be going into my coil, which is my fans and temperature control. Uh, it's going to be going into the coil and also to one of those contactors. So inside the fan there are a bunch of safeties one is a fan delay which won't allow the fans to turn on until the coil gets cold so um one f one side of the 208 is going through um terminal number four in controlling my temperature control and also going through that um fan delay and then back to that coil to energize the coil coil pulls in gives 460 volt to the um, fans. When the unit goes into defrost, um, that will go through my defrost termination switch and also a secondary safety switch for my defrost heaters pulling in 
one of those contactors in activating the heaters. Now the defrost termination switch, um, if that coil gets too hot, will actually engage a little solenoid in the time clock itself, manually tripping it out of defrost. If for any reason that sticks, there's also a secondary safety um, that works off the temperature that kills power to my heaters itself. So uh, if the defrost termination doesn't doesn't uh, trigger, um, the defrost heater limit switch uh, will just shut the heaters down. And uh, that's kind of how that works. All right, let's see if it explodes. Stand back. Pressure's going up. <laughs> there she is. We went back the next day and we were down to negative 14 degrees. Everything was running nice. Um, got a nice little slideshow with some pictures in here to show you. Again, electrician did an excellent, excellent job. Everything came out neat and perfect. No problems on his end. Um, no problems on our end really either. Uh, the only issue that we had with the box was some, you know, minor packaging issues. We had to trim one uh, of the diamond plate pieces and putting in that big door was kind of a pain in the ass. But uh, all in all, it went together relatively nicely. Uh, it's keeping temp. It's doing what they wanted to do. The only issue that we had was, or uh, the only reservation was putting the condensing units inside the building. Um, but, you know, it wasn't in the budget to put them outside the building. So only time will tell how this uh, works out in the long run. But right now they're happy. Uh, we're happy. And uh, everything turned out really well. So thank you guys for watching this video. And we'll have some more for you later.